13 foot. And so I've got this really large little giant ladder that I'm using because I can't lean the ladder against the wall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to get close enough to the wall to fuck around. So anyway, uh, I mean, this ladder weighs an easy 75 pounds and, uh, and I move it. I move it over and over and over again all fucking day. Plus climbing it and climbing down. You know, I got to touch every inch of the wall several times to, to do it. I'm hanging this cork stuff. It's it's a mixture between like uh, maybe grass cloth and wood veneer. Okay. Kind of combined in a weird way. It's weird. It looks like bark is really what it ended up looking, man. But it, I mean, it's just... A little bit easier to hang than wet toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, That's great. It's yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's 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 going to be very lucrative when we get done telling them how much it costs. Oh, they, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. This is. They call this room the the uh, bar, uh, uh, the bourbon room. Because it's where it's dude's man cave. They bought this property, and uh, you know I don't know how much they paid for the property, but it's in a in a gated community of really large houses, and then they dropped 1.5 million in the remodel, and wow. and I'm part of that 1.5 million remodel. Yeah, just downstairs. They're not even fucking with the upstairs so. <laughs> yet. <clears throat> yeah, no shit. I gotta step away for just a second. I'll be right back. All right, but I'm still early anyway. I'll be on time. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Hello, Kevin. Are you with us? I guess not. I'm back. Welcome back. Has Osk joined us yet? I don't think he's on. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think he's on Skype yet. Okay. Yeah, got another uh, another book up on uh, drive through for um, my campaign setting, the Broadhaven campaign setting. So you got That's another. Good. You've got two of them up now? I've got five of them up now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. There's, what the, kind of... So there, I did, uh, it's called the Braunhaven campaign setting. It's yeah. uh, the first one is the campaign setting and the first adventure. So there's two books and one order um, for, it's called the thing in the basement is the first adventure. Right. And then I released uh, a, there was a Christmas adventure that I released um, called St. Baldwear's Magical Workshop. That's pay what you want, so you can download that for free. Right. And then, All um, of it is pay for what you want? No, only only St. Baldwear's is pay what you want. But uh, right now, the campaign setting is on sale until the 13th, I want to say, until uh, Friday. This is, yeah, this is the, the Essentials. 
Is yeah, that... it was for old school essentials. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the campaign setting is on sale. Normally it's $10. Right now it's on sale until Friday for $6. And then um, the the second uh, module, uh, The Light in the Church, is up. Uh. And... Uh, and then I just put up the third uh, module. Um, Do you have a so bundle know... package? Not yet, but I am. I've been, <clears throat> I've been considering that, and so I am going to do a bundle package um, in the very near future. Um, mm. But there, there are a couple more uh, adventures in this series, and so I'm kind of debating, like. Do I wait until this campaign is kind of over and then offer it as a bundle for everything all at once? Um, I might wait to do that, or I might just offer it. It really depends. Um, I mean... Well, I mean, you I mean, can it, do the Beyond route. And go, okay, you buy this bundle right now, and you get a <laughs> discount on other well, products. To the future. Well, yeah, and that, I, I mean, that's what I did for some of the people that had purchased um, the campaign setting. Um, you know, early adopters, when the second uh, book came out, The Light in the Church, I gave them a 50% discount. And yeah. um, the Nobleman's uh, Manor, the one that just came out, I've, uh, as a, at an introductory price, it's half off. So that'll probably, that'll probably go for another week, and, uh, and then it'll be uh -huh. back up to full price. But, um, I mean, I, like I said, I, I mean, a lot of this is really academic because I don't know what's going to happen when OGL 1.1 1 .1, uh, finally hits the dirt. And, uh, I mean... It's taken over on so many groups. To where people, it's now, I'm like, I don't even want to... Well, that's... To, it's because it, there's mass panic. I mean, nobody... I mean... Oh, sure. It could be that that everything that I've done is going to have to be rewritten, so that's a good possibility. But um, well, I mean, didn't the one have a point in it? The the OGL one point say you can use any one like OGL yeah. you wanted for in perpetuity, any in perpetuity yeah. forever. And uh, but it did have it did have the one, and it had this one phrase. It said any authorized version, and uh, so basically they're harping on that word and basically what 1.1 is saying is that it's the only authorized version everything else is now unauthorized which i don't think that's how it works but i mean the i mean you can argue that as much as you want <clears throat> and uh, and i've told a number of people this they're like well it's not legal and i'm like it doesn't matter if it's legal <laughs> it doesn't matter because the truth of the matter is hasbro made 2.6 billion dollars uh, last year in profit and it doesn't matter if it's legal or not because whether or not it is decided to be legal would be decided in a court of law by a judge and or jury and you will never get there you, none of us oh, none but of, you might as a class action uh, maybe I don't know 2.6 billion dollars is a lot of attorneys and, and attorneys that got good money for a little bit of run that want to make a name for themselves take that I, case. I, I just don't think they're. I don't. I don't believe it. Um, uh, none of these third-party uh, publishers have the war chest big enough and enough attorneys to combat the juggernaut that is Hasbro. And Hasbro's attorneys and their two point six billion dollars that they made last year can tie you up in courts for the next twenty years. Your case will never get to court. They will make you bankrupt, and you will cease to exist before it even gets before a judge, and you will no longer be their problem. And so, like I said, it doesn't have to be legal. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Guess, so, you know, yeah, it, there are two point six billion dollars chest though i mean when you start thinking about okay you know you've got little dude over here doing stuff and you've got another guy over there's a there's i mean i, I mean it sounds like a lot of money but when you start talking about a lawyer's team to take on you know several thousand people uh really kind of yeah changed. i mean i, I mean it's, is it profitable to go after you you know uh that I mean, if they the don't end, have they don't have to problem. go after you. All they have to do is put it out. Any any third party 
that decides that they want to, you know, sue or whatever, they've <laughs> lost before they even file the paperwork. Oh, it, maybe so. Simply not. It's simply not something that can that will ever happen. And God forbid, if Hasbro decides that they want to go after you, <laughs> you are fucked, man. I mean, there, there's, you know, so. Like I said, um, it really depends on what's going to happen. And so, uh, you know, everything that I currently have published that's out, um, I do have a contingency plan, but it might mean pulling some of it off the market and rewriting it. Because I know that Castles and Crusades um, has a plan going forward that they are um, they are removing uh, all OGL references. They're removing everything to do with WotC and they're going their own direction. Old School Essentials has also said that they're, it's their, that's kind of their plan, too, but they're in a wait-and-see pattern, so we'll see what's going to happen. We don't know. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, and then last but not least, uh, I, Osiric, you know, they came out that they were going to redo some stuff. Um, Basic RPG came out and said they were going to redo some stuff. And uh, Frog God Games is... Uh, is going to do their own thing, and Cobalt Press is coming out with the Black Flag project. So I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of. <laughs> Here's the thing: whether even if Watsy came out tomorrow and said that they were going to walk back the OGL 1.1, it's too late. They already burned their bridges. They in less than a week, they vaporized five years worth of of good will that they had built up with the community. They, they are simply never going to come back from this. To quote the Mandalorian, this is the way. Yeah, right. What are we this talking about? Uh, destroying Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> Wizards of the Coast destroying themselves but, with OGL 1.1. I really like Savage World. I mean, Savage Lands. There's another, yeah, Savage Lands. That's another one. It's a tight little system. It, it's not even a D20 system. Right. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, there's Rune Quest. I mean, there, there's a bunch of other options out there. So, <clears throat> but I mean, some of the, you know, the popular OSR ones like Old School Essentials and Castles and Crusades, it'll take them, you know, a little bit for them to uh, make their changes and put out new books. Um, and so for me, what that means is that I may have to pull my stuff off and wait until their new license or until their new stuff is out and their new license comes in and then I can publish or, or make any changes and publish for whatever it is that they're they're doing moving forward. So I like I said um as far as <laughs> as far as whether or not I'm going to do a bundle um I'd like to but it it really that's like low on my priority list at the moment. I'm kind of as much as I'm in a wait-and-see pattern, I'm also in a continue writing and get this stuff at least down and out and uh, and uh, move forward. So it, it's a weird time to be working in this industry, is what it is. Well, uh, well Mongoose Goose is cool. Right, yeah. So, right there's back. always Traveler. Yeah, there's always Traveler. And, I, uh, and uh, yeah, I have... The second adventure in the uh, in the series that I that I've been working on for like the yeah, last four years, it's it's uh it's like three quarters of the way done. So, um, yeah, there's that too. So, but I mean that's I, I love mongoose, I do, but that's it's not a great contract either. Um, it's very very similar to uh, the DM's Guild contract where uh, the royalty is draconian um it is 50 percent. so i mean <laughs> mongoose is gonna take their pound of flesh for sure and uh you know i'm not i'm not i'm not paying anywhere near 50 percent publishing myself so <laughs> sure, yeah. you know but uh yeah like i said so it, it's the same it's the same thing um it, like i said it, it's it, it is what it is, and uh, we just have to kind of wait and see. Um, you know, I got a feeling like their silence is going to be a <clears throat> a surefire, even bigger fuckery than what they've already done. <laughs> I'm sure that when they come out, it's going to be so much worse. You know, it's going to be so much worse 
even than the leaks and uh, and the, con the the confirmed negotiations and yeah, it it when they finally do speak up, which I'm expecting any day now, but I mean, who knows? We might be waiting until next week, but uh, it's gonna be worse. I I can guarantee it's gonna be worse. Whatever. But if they do if they do decide to walk it back, anybody who decides to go back and go, oh, we'll see, it was all just a mistake. We're going to keep publishing for them. Those people are idiots because they've already, Watsy has already proven that they cannot be trusted. So do not go back. Forget Watsy. Don't buy any more D&D <laughs> products. Do not buy Wizards of the Coast products. Do not buy Hasbro products. Nothing. Boycott all of it. That's that's my the thing is, yeah, Magic the Gathering is what makes their money. D and D don't make shit compared to Magic. Uh, Gathering. that yeah, that's not necessarily true. That's not true. Well, um, the game store level, and and especially true. after especially after what they pulled. See, I don't un, I don't understand how they're doing this. So they already screwed up with the, the with the Magic the Gathering uh, crowd by releasing their their thousand uh, dollar brick. Uh, set that was supposed oh. to be, you know, all, all all of these fantastic cards through the ages, and immediately, like within hours of releasing it for purchase, and of course you've got Mag Magic the Gathering players have more money than sense. I will tell you, they will spend a yeah. ton of money on cards. That's With, what funds a lot of those game stores. Oh Sorry, yeah, because right? well, and it's not be it, it's not because car the cards make so much money. It's because the profit margin on the cards is better than anything else. The other one that has a high profit margin is board games. But anyways, <clears throat> within hours of releasing that thousand dollar brick set, <laughs> um, Watsy then immediately made them illegal to use in tournaments. Gaming. Of course, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, you know. Uh. Nine. I used to love magic. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's a good drinking game. Well, you know, <laughs> I made a lot of lot of money back when magic was in its you know earlier stages, and I it was nothing for me to cruise around town and buy ten booster packs a day. Uh, we had crazy cards. We had fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were young and unattached. And had a lot of money coded. Pretty yeah, I, I've watched yeah. my my nephews uh, go out and and drop insane amounts of money on these cards, and I'm well, just like, okay. Well, then but, I got together with the mother of my kids and my 13 year old stepson, who was five at the time, thought it was cool to take magic cards in the yard and build houses and set fireworks off with them. Right. <laughs> and yeah. Well, right now that seems suitable. Yeah. Well, but, I don't know, man. I, Nice. <laughs> Welcome to the Pirates of Drynax. We will be picking up where we left off last week. The Travelers um, have taken a job to uh, to help relocate a bunch of refugees that are liberated slaves from the Glorious Empire. And uh, the problem is that they are too many humans in Aslan worlds. And so... <clears throat> the Aslan had uh, a couple of options. The first would be to try to integrate them into their society. The other option, of course, would be to exterminate them. And then the the last option, which is a radical plan, is to move them somewhere else. And so, before we get started, we would like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. Uh, none of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. And... Uh, Tonight, we would like to thank Speechless Bard. Speechless Bard makes wonderful leather products for your tabletop role-playing games, such as uh, leather covers for your core rule books. She makes, um, she has this really cool dice mat that <clears throat> that you roll out and you can roll your dice on, and when you roll it up, it looks like a spell scroll. Um, she has a number of items. Uh, dice bracelets, the they, uh, cutouts of the dice on the leather bracelet, and they can be done in multiple colors. Um, one of her more popular ones is the Pride Bracelet. Um, just amazing product. She does all of the artwork and customization by hand. Um, she is an amazingly talented artist. If you are going to order from her, make sure that you give yourself a little bit of extra time. Uh, of course, unless you're already over there, then you probably don't have to worry about it. Uh, but she is over in the UK, so it could take a little while for it to get across the pond over here, especially with uh, the 
supply chain issues and all of that. <clears throat> if you are a fan of our Traveler games, please check the link down below for our webpage via the Obsidian portal. Um, the adventure log is written in the manner of news service articles, <clears throat> and uh, the Travelers, now that they are um, public enemy number one as far as the Imperium is concerned in the Trojan Reach, are taking a much more front page uh, newsworthy um, story uh, right now. Um, and that's that's the other interesting part is that they are traveling <clears throat> with Yana Teak, a traveler uh, traveler news service uh, reporter, and uh, <clears throat> we'll we'll get into more about Yana Teak in our game. Um, so, <clears throat> if you like the content that you see on our Obsidian Portal page, please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up. We do like to see the fan likes, and we hope you enjoy. Um. So yeah, we were talking earlier. Um, there is a new book in the Braunhaven campaign setting that just came out uh, earlier today. Uh, the Nobleman's Manor. It is a level 3 through 5 adventure for the Braunhaven campaign setting. Um, check it out on DriveThruRPG. <clears throat> you can find all of those books. Uh, just search Braunhaven uh, and they should all pop up for you. So <clears throat> you took this job. Um, in fact... You took a job with uh, Val Treadwell. Oh. Yeah. There we go, Captain Val Treadwell. So this is uh, Captain Val Treadwell. You met him on Asus <clears throat> and uh, he hired you guys um, with a daring, uh, crazy idea of uh, transporting um, these refugees from uh, Hitiakia to some other world as yet unnamed. <clears throat> and uh, you have the, um, the backing of the uh, clan co of uh, Hitiakia. And uh, essentially, you know, this is going to be a multi, uh, you know, a multiple, uh, several trips because there are thousands of these of these refugees. Um, when the uh, when the Aslan Harry took over the these worlds um, from um, from the Glorious Empire, um, specifically, we're we're looking at the the Halai chain. Uh, here and uh, so <clears throat> when they took over these worlds from the glorious empire um, the, the big question was you know what to do with all of the human slaves because the glorious empire is known for two things and that's slaving and uh, and mercenaries and um, so there were all these slaves that were left over um, the Aslan the, the Harriet isn't big on they've kind of moved away from the whole slavery thing unlike the glorious empire they're they're much more old school <laughs> um and so the question has been you know what to do with these guys and or these people and you know one option is to uh re or just integrate them into aslan society and you know that this has worked on other worlds um there's a lot of uh, frontier worlds, especially along the Soleimani border, um, you know, that have <clears throat> integrated Aslan human societies. And if you talk to the humans on those worlds, they act just as Aslan as as the Aslan do. Um, there's there's really um, no issue with that. The problem that uh, that the uh, that these these clans have is. Uh, well, uh, twofold. First of all, there's just simply so many of them. Um, and then the second problem is, is that, be, of course, uh, these worlds in the Halai chain, um, part of the deal with, ta uh, like I said before, Rexar was a part of some of these battles. Part of the deal with taking over these worlds is that the clans used Ihati um, and the Ihati, they want 
they want land. And it's if you have taken over a world and every inch of land is taken up by human slaves that are left over, there's that's a problem. And so <clears throat> um, there, there's issues here. And so the other option, which is uh, just a, a terrible one, is that they it has been uh, brought up that uh, we could just exterminate them. And, uh, of course, that was initially said, no, we can't do that. But that, that option, it seems to be gaining more and more steam among some of the clans, especially uh, the Rahrao uh, Triumvirate and, uh, and a couple of other clans. So um, this, this guy hired you guys. Um, he has given you a clan, an Aslan clan transport that, uh, or he, he gave that to Captain Val Treadwell. And his idea is we're going to see about actually putting these people on another world. And so you have uh, made the, the long seven or eight week trip to Hitiakia. And, um, and when you get there, um, Captain Treadwell, you know, uh, told you that, uh, that shenanigans uh, will be put into um, a very safe mothball. Uh, the, the planet has a, um, I mean, you're, you are basically guests of uh, the clan head. So, you know, you don't have to worry about your ship. That's, that should be the least of your worries. So this is, when you came into Hitiakia, uh, this is the planet that you are coming to. It is, um, well, it's, it's, not, it's not a beautiful planet. Um, it's mostly, it's fairly dry. <clears throat> Most of the water is trapped in uh, the polar ice caps. Um, it, if you notice, if you look at this picture, you get a, kind of a hint of it. It is at a pretty steep uh, angle uh, for its um, rotation, and a couple there, that means a couple of things. The first thing that that means is that um, the air is you, is fairly thin. Um, the other thing that it means uh, so the atmosphere is fairly thin, which also means that th and th this is a twin star system, I believe. I think that's right. Yes, this is a twin system um, with a K-65 uh, and an M-35. And um, the, <clears throat> the issue with the thin atmosphere is that there's not enough there to really shield everybody from, um, <clears throat> from the radiation of the stars. And so um, that, that, uh, that means that the, it's a fairly barren planet. And there, the, what little water there is on the world actually seeps out from these polar ice caps and kind of makes its way across the world. It's, it's a, it's not a, a beautiful place, but it's home for this clan. And, uh, you, you, when you arrived, you could, you were, you're guests of the co. So you can just bypass, uh, the, the starports. Now the, or the, uh, the uh, high ports. The there are a number of high ports around this world, and they are all rather utilitarian. Um, Hitiakia is actually known for being a um, uh, a mining port, more or less. Um, the the belts of the system and the planet itself are actually very mineral rich, and so a lot of this stuff, these high ports are just there to um, load it up, get it out, load it up, get it out. That's all they're there for. Um, but you are directed to a down port. And the down port, um, at first, doesn't look that spectacular, but this is what the down port looks like. And uh, it's a small, classy uh, starport. <clears throat> um, you are given... Um, <clears throat> Priority docking, uh, since you are friends of the clan lord. And um, 
you can see that there is, and you, you can see in the background in this picture, there's a crane there. Uh, there's a lot of construction going on. And at first, you, you're looking at this port and you're thinking, well, this there's not a whole lot of dock. There, there's not a whole lot of docking pads and whatnot. And uh, but you see that there's a whole bunch of construction going on. And it dawns on you that all of this construction, uh, they are planning on Hitikia, uh, Hitikia, or Hitikia, uh, whatever, Aslan words. Um, they're planning on this planet becoming a lot more uh, busy and popular than it currently is. This is their plan. Their plan for this planet is to be a major push through for this clan's um, trading goods that are going to be, you know, traveling coreward towards the Dust Belt. Um, and so you, you are able to dock and um, you disembark from um, shenanigans and Captain Treadwell uh, meets up with you. And, uh, and of course, you also have uh, traveling with you is Yana Teak and what is her, I forget her, um, Hammerman's name. Nendo. Nendo, her holographer. Um, <clears throat> and so they kind of, uh, they're, they're just, Watching everything that you do. Um, and you guys notice that <clears throat> Nendo uh, is... He doesn't have to carry a, a camera rig or anything. He has uh, implants. And he, he just basically watches everything that you guys do and records it all to his uh, portable computer. And um, so basically, <laughs> if, if you've seen The Expanse, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, the, they are with you 24-7. They... they Follow your every move. Um, but Yana at this point is kind of hanging back. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Captain Treadwell goes uh, over to a, um, an information desk and, you know, signs you guys in, tells them who, and tells the, the information desk who he is, who you are. <clears throat> and, um, they immediately go ahead and set up a situation where they can uh, transfer uh, shenanigans over to a holding pad, and uh, and um, they assure you that it will be well taken care of, and uh, um, it is on on the uh, on the clan lord, so there will be no docking fees. And Captain Treadwell uh, says, "Well, now that we're here." I suppose I should uh, show you to the Betty. The Betty? The Betty. And so this is uh, the Kiakia system. Um, like I said, it's two stars. Uh, the planet itself is 0.28 AU, which I, honestly at 0.28 AU, I think it would be quite a bit warmer than this and a lot less water, but that's my opinion. <clears throat> Darn that, that petty science. Um, but yeah, as you can see, part of the planet's frozen, part of the planet's baked. It, <laughs> it's a great place. Does shenanigans need anything to keep her busy while we're gone? Probably not. Um, I mean, if... Do we get her hooked up to the World Wide Web or whatever so she can... Uh... Oh yeah, I mean she can she can sit there and uh, um, she's connected to the uh, planet wide network. She can keep her eyes and ear or well her ears open at the very least, and uh, kind of you know what you guys have talked about was that she can sit there and listen to communications and things of that nature to see if um, you know any lucrative trade deals, things of that that kind of stuff. You know. We also have a long list of crap that we need to be starting to funnel towards tech world as far as supplies and materials and all that. I mean, perhaps shenanigans could, you know, uh, at least put word out that, you know, tech world is looking to purchase whatever all that list of crap that they said they wanted was, Certainly. you know. 
I mean, they're they're always looking for um, <clears throat> essentially raw materials, ore, and and uh, you know uh, things of, yeah. of that nature. So I mean, I mean, if you want. Um, shenanigans can put that information out on the World Wide Web, or I, I, I mean, I guess we're going to call it that, on the network. <clears throat> and um, System Wide Web. The System Wide Web. Yeah, she can put that out on the net and uh, and see, you know, what comes back. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's my understanding that, I mean, it, when Tech World gets all these supplies that they wanted, you know, I mean, we already started on food, but, I mean, then they'll start producing things that kind of... Then they'll start producing things that you want, right? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean, they'll, they'll be able to start producing things to, like, you know, maybe system defense boats and and things like that. Is is that correct? Uh, unlikely that Tech World is going to be able to build any... Sh I mean, I, as it stands, I don't know that they really focus too much on building ships. I mean, I know they have a starport, but other than that, I, I just... I, I They don't seem like they would be that big into that. Um, but they would certainly... They have other um, exports, um, robots, a huge yeah. export for Tech World, um, and cybernetics, and you know, all manner of crazy science stuff. So they potentially could start to purchase those items, but these, the the need for them to get raw materials isn't so much a you know that's never gonna that's never going to end. They need uh, okay. they need a steady supply of that stuff coming in, so that Tech World continue to be Tech World, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, I just I remember we said we were supposed to be trying to get all that crap out there. So. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. No. She can. She can definitely put the word out, and um, I don't know. You could give her the mandate to kind of wheel and deal while you're gone, and try to keep track of best of best uh, options. I mean, that would help develop shenanigans to Aslan Live too. That's true. Yeah. That's that's what I suggest. Anybody else have any? Uh... No, I think that you know, uh, I don't know if we want everybody knowing we have such a powerful AI, but uh, yeah, you know, and I mean, computer. Yeah, she would not. Instructions to. She would not uh, tell anyone that she was a conscious intelligence. Right. I mean, she would. She would maintain her identity as you know a, a a crew member, of of your of your team. I mean, she's. Which is yeah. how she looks at herself, anyways. <laughs> that works yeah. for me. But you know, if she can like hack into uh, or just you know, make sure we're not getting screwed on the back end. By, right. Uh, right. So he, uh, so Captain Treadwell, um, you kind of leave this with uh, in shenanigans, virtual hands, and uh, Captain Treadwell leads you. Um, he 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 loads you guys up into a uh, covered uh, uh, sealed air car or a sealed air raft, and uh, takes you across the starport to another pad. And sitting on this pad is uh, a 600-ton clan transport. It looks like this. And uh, from the outside, as you guys are walking up on it, um, uh, Keith, you can definitely tell um, that this, this is an old ship. <laughs> and... <clears throat> you can see numerous scratches, dents, dings, um, abrasions, um, not more than a couple of uh, scorch marks where lasers have stitched this thing across the hull a couple of times. Um, Rexar, you notice immediately that uh, the... And what do they call it? They Well, I'm not going to pronounce that. But there are uh -oh. usually Aslan um, inscriptions all over... Um, these ships, especially ones of, of this age. I, I mean, I would say that they're kind of 
Um, they're like a, almost a religious graffiti kind of thing. Um, you, there, you guys have already seen some of this. There's a ton of this stuff on the inside of your ships. Um, where at where rexar has gone and and done you know haiku, haikus a, everywhere a, aslan haikus on the walls with, with aslan crayons. tagging yes aslan tagging um most of that has been uh lasered or scratched off of the hull however there is one um mark and you can see it in red right on the front of the hull and um Captain Treadwell tells you, he's like, well, I, I removed most of this because it doesn't, we are a human crew, it doesn't apply to us, but I kept this one because I was told that it means resilience. Does it, in fact, mean resilience? It does. Is it, like... it does. It's not, okay. it's not like, it's, it's not it's like, not like, not like uh, a Japanese tattoo. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not like the... And it means penis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's not like, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the blonde hooker got out and getting a, a Chinese kanji on her arm. Oh, this this means resilience. It actually means wontons or something. Yes, yes. I don't know. <laughs> okay, glad it uh, they aren't. And uh, so he he kept that uh, he kept that mark, but um, uh, you can tell that just from the way uh, Captain Treadwell talks about the ship that he is named the Bad Betty. Um, clearly not an Aslan name, um, but he he tells the just the way that he acts about it that this is um, his pride and joy, and uh, oh. he leads you towards the central or the central rear section. There is a uh, lift that is down, and he leads you up into the ship itself. And so this is, I mean, like I said, six hundred tons. It's it's. Uh, it's just not small. Well, if they got a haul, I, I like people. Yeah, I like that it has jump one at twice. Right. So, and actually, actually, it should be more than that. I think they got that wrong. That's because it's secretly two ships in one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's actually more than that. So, so the first thing, so Keith. Uh, make a make a engineering uh, J drive plus intellect check. Okay. Twelve. Okay, so he leads you guys up into uh, the um, you know the 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 lift takes you up into the ship and kind of starts towards the rear of the ship and. Uh, the first thing that Keith notices is that um, the engineering compartment, um, the the jump drive that's in there is way smaller than what was originally in here. I mean, you can see the the mounting holes and brackets where the original jump drive was, and this one is much smaller, and they had to makeshift it and everything else. Um, what what he tells you is that uh, the original drive had some problems um, and it was just too expensive to get another one of this size. And so they took a jump drive out of an Aslan trader and uh, stuck it in here. So that it's a smaller drive, which means it only has jump one, but they do have, and you saw this uh, down here in uh, the the cargo area. Um, <clears throat> so most of the cargo area, when you came in, you know, you see uh, that most of this is taken up. I mean, nearly half is taken up with um, with um, cold storage, um, low birds, and he tells you that uh, that that's simply the easiest way. For them to transport all of these refugees is that um you know if they're going if they're <laughs> if we're going to do this in only a couple of runs we're just going to have to do it to the point where a lot of them are in cold storage because if not um we'll be doing this for the rest of our lives um the other part of the cargo bay is taken up by a large collapsible fuel tank uh, fuel bladder and so the 
um, the reality. Okay, so no, they did get this right. If you if you <laughs> if you do the math correctly, so the ship is capable of doing a jump one, and then the fuel bladder can hold two more jump ones. So you can make three jump ones as is. Um, in the in the bottom uh, deck, there is a ninety five ton shuttle as an auxiliary craft. Now, uh, the <clears throat> the Betty, the Bad Betty is a, a standard hull design, and the only reason why she actually successfully landed on the planet here is because of the the uh, uh, thin atmosphere and gravity. Um, if there was more gravity in a thin atmosphere, she'd have just fallen like a rock. <clears throat> Usual procedure is that they use the uh, the shuttle, the Little Betty, to um, to to cur to ferry between the ship in orbit and the planetary surface. It the little Betty, and I'll show that to you. Also has a virtual crap ton of um, low birds. So um, you're talking about um, at this point people in cold storage, like a hundred and eighty people in cold storage between the two. And then um, a small amount uh, will be taken, you know, in in uh, staterooms, and uh, and uh, those will be those will be like the leaders of of the uh, of the refugees because they do have their their the people that they follow and religious leaders of, of that matter. Some of them are just terrified of being in low birds, so um, that's something to keep in mind as well but <clears throat> anyways um he he continues to lead you on through and he takes you up to the uh um crew decks and you know deck four and deck five um well deck five is kind of the crew deck um tells you guys to pick out whatever staterooms you want um and uh um you know shows you the bridge the bridge um, when you get to the bridge, camera. So, uh, Captain Beth, you you look in on the the bridge, and Rexar, you poke your head in, and you're like, "Hey, why'd they ruin everything?" So, all of the the <laughs> controls have been overlaid with holographic controls, so that people can actually use them, because otherwise they would be extremely simplistic. <laughs> And so um, it looks like the bridge was mostly designed for a male Aslan crew. And so they have kind of overlaid them with holographic controls for um, for uh, human crews. And also, you know, it trans the holographic controls translate things from Troc to Galanglic and, and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, he tells you guys to pick your own um, rooms. And then he does show you that there is this one chamber up here that um that is um it is an aslan shrine and he tells you that even though they could use the space with transporting as many people as they wanted he just didn't have the heart to to take anything out and he, he thinks that that would be disrespectful and so he has left this shrine um for any aslan passengers or even the human passengers that have um you know, become a part of Aslan society. Are they like the halflings of Aslan society? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, I don't. Kind of what it would be. Like. Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I mean, they're they're you're close. I I just can't really put my my finger on. Um, you know, it, it's it's a very. Uh, it would be. <laughs> It would be more like um, um, Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, you know, where where he be, he he went native and became, you know, he embroiled in samurai politics, um, and uh, even though he is clearly a Westerner, it's more like that. But some of these some of these humans, um, well, all, most of these humans have never known a life outside of Aslan. Um, 
like they were a lot of these guy these people were were born in the glorious empire they were born to other slaves um there's a there's few of them that have been captured of course um <clears throat> but a good portion of these people um they've never known a life other than slavery and so you know they they act and talk a lot like Aslan. I mean, they, that's so they're all they've smaller ever and they're hungry all the time and they're sneaky. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, he, he kind of, you know, he kind of turns you guys loose and says, you know, we have a little bit of time before we have to meet the, we're going to be meeting the clan Lord for dinner. Um, but we've got a little bit of time. He turns you guys loose. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to uh, check out on the ship? Is, is he planning on traveling with us? Uh, yeah, he w yeah he was going to go with you. I mean, this is his ship. He but he hired you guys to specifically crew her. Okay, so is he going to act as captain and try to tell us mm -hmm. how to go about doing this, or is he going to be like? Just an owner that comes through and evaluates and he'd either probably be, yeah he'd or... probably be more like the purser the the owner that you know um I mean you guys are gonna be running the show that that's why he hired okay. you all right yeah okay I guess I gotta check out like the guns and stuff <laughs> so the you check out the guns um the and I gotta double check this. I will also check out the guns, as that is the only part of the ship I'm interested in. So the only guns are actually in a fixed mount on the Little Betty. Um, the Little Betty has a fixed mount pulse laser, um, and it's got really terrible sensors. Um, but the Bad Betty herself does not have any weapons. You notice that none of the hard points, there are no turrets, there are no hard points that have been configured. There's no weapons outfitted at all. Okay. Yeah, um, I well, like this idea a lot less. <laughs> we do look like <laughs> shit, so why would anybody try and rob anything from us, I guess? Yeah, we we do kind of look like shit. It's um, the shittiest Aslan to... ship I've been on. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, here, right, I am your chief of security, and I do not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Can we sit, let's duct tape some guns on it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, can can we modify and get some some guns for this? You could I mean, certainly, can... you, you know, when you have dinner with the uh, clan lord, you could certainly bring it up to him. Okay. I'm comfortable with our gun being me standing on the ship with the PGMP. <laughs> yeah, just, just just strap Rexar to the roof with a cargo strap and. <laughs> I want I want to check out the uh, um, the systems, you know, jump drive, uh, okay. maneuver yeah. drive. So make sure that things ship shape. So yeah, um, make a um. Well, first, I mean, how how so? Are you just running diagnostic on things? Or are you are you actually you know? Getting down on a roller and, and going underneath and checking out the undercarriage and stuff like that. I mean, I'm how... just start with diagnostics, but uh, if there's anything that concerns me, I'll take a closer look, definitely. Okay, so go ahead and make a uh, engineering plus intellect check. Okay. Just be a basic engineering plus intellect. Seven. Oh, shit. Okay, so diagnostic, I mean, that that's a routine check. You, you you beat that by one so um so you uh run diagnostics and the diagnostics come back that um yeah i mean yeah it's operational but but um there there could be some um there could be some basic work that could be done um it it's flyable. <laughs> let's, it's flyable. Let's, let's oh say that. Uh, oh, but right. but uh, you're you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, this isn't really, you know, this isn't this doesn't fill me with confidence. I you, you could spend a couple of hours in here um, with a couple of people and making things ship shape. 
I'd like to fire up the computers and check out uh, what it's talking about. Like, you know, maybe do a diagnostics of the system. Does it have security? What's much? Does the captain have a specific file set aside with his name on it? But thank you know, just the normal. Okay. normal so, Tang, go ahead and make a um, go ahead and make a computers plus intellect or education check. <clears throat> There you go. So that's thirteen. So the the first thing that you um, the first thing that you you realize is that um, there seems to be just a little bit of lag, and because you realize <clears throat> that what the lag is is that the the computer, which is a computer five BIS, so it has a it has a specialty in jump. Uh, and jump and, and astrogation and jump stuff. That's great, except that everything is in truck. And so where the lag is is that the holographic controls are translating it over to humans in Galanglic. Okay. Well, I have a translator program, and since that's what they like is truck, I will I will speak truck as I as I mumble around, and I will actually use my shrieker box to give myself an Azalan sound. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna be human, but I'm gonna sound like a fucking cat. You know, okay. I, I will. Yeah. You know, I'll modify Rex R's voice a little bit. You know, uh, tweak it, and and so maybe I, I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal his vocal identity and alter it kind of. <laughs> but anyway yeah uh but I, can i try to do something to straighten some of this programming up streamline it i mean i have a translator program and i mean i have i have my own computer i could whip out and... yeah you certainly can um you can make uh, another computer plus intellect or education check and uh so um if you're trying to stream are you are you basically uh, if you're wanting to streamline it, you're going to have to write code. Um, I mean, I'll take my time here while everybody is doing. Okay. All the, so you, you uh, can, I mean, you're, you're wanting something like a database software or something like that, which I'm assuming that you probably already have. Um, no. You can go ahead and, uh, and use that to, um, to write code to try to streamline this. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna use my personal computer, you know, I'm gonna make sure that there's no I guess first what I'm looking up my computer to is I want to check for viruses and stuff. Yeah, you, it it seems clean. Okay, yeah, then then yeah, I'll, I want to use my computer because it's it's probably a, a higher technical level as I have a 14. Right. Yeah, and this uh, is only yeah. a TL12 ship, so yeah, so I'm going to use my personal computer to try to do all that. And can I get the bonus of my tech levels added to the... Absolutely. All right. So here we go. Database building, streamlining, that's an 11. Okay, so you're on the bridge kind of working on cleaning up this uh, database. And, uh, and I mean, for the most part, what you're finding is <coughs> it looks like somebody did a factory reset. This... The, the whole thing, I mean, it, you've got uh, astrogation data that has been downloaded from the starport, obviously, that every ship gets whenever they uh, whenever they officially dock. But aside from that, um, there's no real logs, nothing. I mean, it's, it's all... It, it's like the day she rolled off the TL-12 uh, manufacturing floor. Well, we have to definitely set up a Drenix t style theme, you know, <laughs> colors. Yeah, uh, you got to do all of your desktops the same, yeah. Oh, yeah, damn right. Everybody is now, you know, going Ting style. And, uh, and, and you know, like the notification, you know, sound is now like a quick fart, you know, because uh, that, that'll get your attention more than a bing. <laughs> I'm just, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, a little customization, you know. Uh, some 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 Drenix theme music played in the background for when you're on hold on all the automated messages and stuff. <laughs> uh, Ox, is there anything that you're looking to to check out? I'm good. Well, I'm gonna wander around the starport and do uh, some carousing and smoozing and okay. Uh, see what the general population thinks of this whole idea, you know, of us transporting humans and 
make a... Uh, how much are you spending on your corrals? Uh, 500. Ooh. We're gonna, we're gonna go... Well, you know, I gotta do some gambling, too. Well, of course. <clears throat> yeah, so, so you can go ahead and make your corrals check at plus five. Okay. <clears throat> I want to see, you know, if the, everybody is behind the, the clan lord, you know, or if, if there's some grumbling type stuff. Okay. Twelve. Okay, so you get, uh, like, four rumors. Uh, the first one so the first rumor uh, that you hear so and I need to switch us over to this other map <clears throat> so that you can um, get an idea of what I'm talking about here so <clears throat> so you are here and <clears throat> you hear a rumor at one of the card tables uh, that the triumvirate that runs Hra, uh, Hra Ryu, um, the triumvirate has decided that they're just going to exterminate all of their planet's humans. They've they've decided that they're just they're done with it. Um, well, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. They're vermin. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. You're a vermin. I mean, I got to put up with them, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So the other one that you hear, and is that even on this map? Well, and but our clan lord only runs this system, right? The one Correct. We're for? Correct. Okay. Oh, up here, I guess it is on this map. You hear a rumor that Lysidaeus and Torrance are at war and are plague ravaged hell holes with which few Ihati are considered or are considering for colonization. It looks like these two worlds, which aren't particularly beautiful worlds anyway, um, uh, are at war with one another. They have a plague going on, and the there's a few Ihati that are considering invading for colonization. That's Sounds like there'd be better choices, but yeah, you know. maybe, yeah. Uh, okay, and then down here now. There it is. Colony six and Delta Theta have experienced ex increased raids and attacks from the Glorious Empire. Rexar has a little bit of um um. Experience. Uh, he he spent a little bit of time on Colony Six, um, but Colony Six and Delta Theta were all and Gortel. Uh, they were all part of the as or a part of the Glorious Empire as well. And so, um, basically, what you're hearing here is that the Glorious Empire is continuing to raid Colony Six and Delta Theta. Ugh. Um, now, where's the Glorious Empire based at? Uh, they are. Like, How much is left of them? A, a lot. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big organization, and they all suck. Yeah, okay. they're... That's the Draenex chain. I don't know if I have... There's the Glorious Empire, and then there's the other side, which isn't... Slavery, yeah, so, isn't... like, if you... Like, this map... Oh, that shows great it. part is Glorious? Yeah, and it, it actually goes quite a bit further rimward. They're, they're a small sliver... But there's enough there that they are, they they are a concern. And we're lucky they're too busy fighting each other. Well, yeah, it's not even it's not so much that they're fighting each other; it's that they are literally falling apart from within. Um, and I get one more roll. Last roll. Uh, Dostoevsky is a habitable world, but its environment is harsh. Uh, find that planet. Up there in 1118. Yep. 
Yeah, so the rumor that you hear is that it that you know it's got a harsh environment, but other than that, um, it's habitable, and they're surprised that nobody has tried to colonize that planet. Well, somebody's there, right? It's a A class starport. Yes. There's there's something else there too. <laughs> Um, I don't know how much of that you guys would know, though. Um, and I don't think it's really open knowledge. Okay. Eh, yeah, I mean... We, we just basically got to pick a place to drop these people off and then come back and pick up more and, and repeat for several times, right? That's the That's the general plan, yes. Um, I wanted to try and search for like news stories of ships like ours getting like raided or stolen or anything. Like, what are ships like the Bad Betty? Yeah, just I mean, ships filled with like a bunch of um, meat popsicle people. Like, did <laughs> any, are people like, oh no, I don't want your garbage, or they or Ogden raiders like, oh look, it's the freezer section at Kroger, <laughs> or you know, like. Go ahead and make a uh, um, computer plus intellect or education check. Uh, okay. I got 10. Good for me. So you do find a little bit of... Uh, you find a little bit of information on it. Um, Of course, there are the 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 telltale signs of Augment Raiders, of course. Um, but um, down here in the Aslan Harate, um, from what you can determine, <clears throat> um, the Glorious Empire seems to be the the big culprits of um, of ships getting hit. Um, now, the the weird thing is, the Glorious Empire is a very strange. Um, they're, they're hypocrites, really. So, um, being a pirate is dishonorable. So, and that's, that's pretty much standard across all Aslan. So, I mean, if Rexar, um, if it were to come out that Rexar was actually a pirate, uh, his, his standing would be in the tank because, um, that's, that's just dishonorable. Um, so the in the Glorious Empire, um, they will pirate a ship and kidnap all the people, though. <laughs> and then turn around and sell the people to other people in the Glorious Empire or keep them as slaves themselves. And they're okay with that. They don't... I, I don't know. It, it's it, Like I said, they're hypocrites. Um, but... It's a better case for getting guns on the ship, though. So yeah, there are right. there are cases of uh, of raids, and you do you see several reports. Um, like I said, Colony Six and Delta Theta have been have been uh, recently dealt with uh, Glorious Empire raids, and so there are a lot of there's a lot of uh, activity in this area. So you probably don't want to be flying around completely. Unarmed. I can see. I can see where that you wouldn't like that idea. All right. Cool. Um, Rexar, is there anything that you wanted to check out on the ship or in the starport? Are you muted, Rexar? Probably muted. Sorry, I was plating up. I got Thai food. Ah. Oh. So is there anything is there anything that you want to check out on the ship or in the starport or I want to try and calibrate those guns. Well, the only guns are on Little Betty, um but you can s certainly do that. Um I would allow you to make a um <laughs> Shit, How does that work? Um uh... Rexar knows guns, but he isn't smart. I think this is the first time we've ever looked at um, 
fixed mount. That would be I guess it would just be a uh gunner. Uh go ahead and make a gunner plus um your choice, either intellect or education. I have a flat zero in intelligence as so And do you have plus. gunner do you have gunner fixed? Or just gunner turret? I've gunner turret. Yeah. I would say I mean, gunner at zero plus either your intellect or education. Do they so it's a flat, flat a roll. Fix? And I got nine. You got a nine, okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Ox? Do they have a gunner fixed? I mean, you're basically pointing your, uh, yeah, your I mean, ship you're just, to somebody. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it is a gunner check, so... Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're able what? to kind of... Um, I mean, you're basically... Um, <laughs> it's like sighting a gun. Exactly, it's like you're sighting a gun. You're making sure that the pulse laser fires, you know, along the, the nose of the, the shuttle. Um, but, I mean, you know, even the shuttle has holographic controls, but the sensors are basic on the shuttle. So you're, you're making sure that what the nose of that shuttle is pointed at is where that pulse laser is going to go. Because it's not like the computer is going to assist you in any way. Listen, if I learned anything from Mass Effect, it's that calibrating that damn gun is super important. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, right? Uh, Keith, go ahead and make a. Are you gonna? Are you going to uh, continue to dig around? What What are you What are you doing? Yeah, I think I'm gonna get. Uh, um, I I assume I have my uh, droid with me. My oh, astromech. Droid. Absolutely. I'll, I'll be. Uh, I'll be working with the droid to try to uh, improve our situation. I guess. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and make a uh, investigation plus. In, uh... Yeah, make an investigation plus intellect check. Or investigate. Uh, ten. Okay, so... On here. So, um, yeah, you, you find a number of locations that uh, you can um, make better... Um, with some some of the spares, and you know that um, part of part of this cargo bay, where the cold storage and the uh, the collapsible bladder is, most of the rest of this bay is taken up with spares. <clears throat> so I mean, there's very little space here for you know. The people that are coming on, they better be not bring much more than just a backpack because there's no room for, for once you get 180 people in cold storage, there's not going to get room for it. Um, and so you have quite a few spares here. Um, you can make a mechanic check at, uh, and we'll say that you get to make it with a boon because uh, AX57 is helping you. Cool. Eleven. Excellent. So, you um, kind of spend the afternoon uh, tinkering around in engineering, and you get it pretty much to a point where you feel quite a bit more confident that um, that you know things are torqued down properly. That there's not going to be any kinks in the fuel lines. You're not going to end up with any electrical fires. Um, you know, it it's it's the diagnostic is coming back more in the percentages of the green that you would expect to be quote unquote flyable <laughs> rather than the yellow it was coming back before. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so um is there anything else that you guys want to investigate around the ship? I'm happy. All the people are frozen, right? Not yet. You haven't loaded anybody on board yet. Now, now it's funny. Am I getting that, it's funny. A side you, eye. It's funny oh, that you asked that, Rexar. So, so the, 
wrecks are, and, and Keith, you noted this as well, um, the, the low birds, not only are there, I mean, <laughs> it's just a veritable shit ton of these low birds, but there is also um, two additional batteries. And you note the same thing on the little better, Betty, that there is a third additional battery. And Captain Treadwell tells you, and Keith, you verify this through your, um, through your poking around and doing repairs and engineering, is that um, there just simply isn't enough power um, for, for everything. I mean, if you look over here at the power requirements, so this um, Fusion TL12 engine puts out 255 uh, for the power plant. And I mean, it's 120 just for the maneuver drive and 120 for basic ship systems. And then there are 15 low birds. That, it, that's a lot of power. If for whatever reason that you lose power, then those people in the low birds could die. And so these additional, these are high efficient uh, TL12 batteries that each of those batteries supplies another 120 power points. And it's the same way on the on the little Betty is that there's a there's another hundred or another high energy or high high efficiency battery on the little Betty that'll supply another sixty power points. So that if for how long though? <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, it, it's more like a UPS system. You uh, better you you better save and and get your power back on. <laughs> so. For, not for very long, but it gives it will give the engineer enough time to be able to get uh, power restored, hopefully. So there's definitely there's no way that this can support a weapon system then. Well, I mean, it, it it could support a weapon system. I mean, you got to figure that uh, you know um, when you're going into combat, there's a lot of stuff that is just simply going to get sh shut off. Sh basic ship systems, you don't need the microwave. Um, the, the refrigerator can be sh can be turned off until the battle is over, you know, <laughs> you know things like that. It's um, worth trying. You know, people don't need hot water, you know, while you're in the middle of space combat. Um, okay. You know, things like that. Um, Missiles and sandcasters don't use much power. That's true. They also uh, lasers are different. Lasers are going to be your better bet, though. Um, I mean, if if you get a missile launcher. It's going to fire, you know, one, maybe two missiles. That's pretty easy to shoot those down. But with a laser, you can't shoot down a laser, and you just do damage. True. Plus, uh, a laser takes up less space. True. Yeah, yeah, and then you got to, with missiles, you got to worry about carrying around that, that rack of 12, because you're going to yeah. have, you know, reloads. So yeah, uh, so it's got high efficient batteries. You you could uh, you you can talk to the co and uh, he can uh, tell you whether or not you are allowed to um, um, arm the Betty. Um, but you know, Captain Treadwell, you know, tells you um, as you guys. So he, basically, he he tells you guys to go ahead and clean up. Or you know, you don't have to clean up too much. They're Aslan. They probably come as you are. Um, he tells you, you know, that, um, that it, you know, we should get going, um, and, uh, that, uh, a sealed, uh, he calls it an air raft. You look out the port and, uh, out the window and it looks more like an air limousine, um, has arrived to take you guys to, um, the, uh, clan lord's manor and, uh, um, he tells you guys, you know, we can talk with the clan lord about it, but he he says I'm I'm not too sure about going too far with weaponry because that that kind of is the opposite of what we're doing, kind of thing. We're not we we don't want to be a combat ship, and we don't want to give off the impression that we're a combat ship. We're just trying to get these poor people to some place where they can live their lives. So that's his recommendation. But he says, uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm just along for the ride. I'm just the purser. I'm just, I'm just here to write the checks. Um, you guys uh, make your decisions, and you can talk to the clan lord about it. And so he, uh, you guys exit out, and there is this really long sealed air raft. <clears throat> And uh, you get into this air raft, 
and uh, the the driver is a fairly gruff male. There is a female in the back, and she is the one who is basically attending to all of you. Um, it is you, it Rexar. It is your impression that this is that that these are mates um, that are working together, and um, and she she kind of um, as as he takes off uh, and you know the the air raft takes off shooting across um, the landscape um, at a fairly high rate of speed. Um, she is, you know, kind of, she's serving drinks, and one of the drinks that she serves you is a beer that is actually made from dust spice. And dust spice has a mild intoxi mildly intoxicating effect on humans. Actually, it has a mildly intoxicating effect on Aslan, too, but whatever. Um, and, and, but it is, it, it's like a spiced beer, uh, kind of flavor, and so, uh, they pass, she passes out that, and uh and the other thing that she passes out is a um <clears throat> a pressure suit and a it's a kind of like a respirator mask and a they're goggles but they're kind of like big sunglasses they're mirrored and uh and she she tells you that <clears throat> because of the thin atmosphere and because of the radiation um that you know, walking around outside, you'll need to wear these um, so that you can um, that you can actually operate outside or or move around outside without um, you know being in distress and being irradiated and cooked to a crisp. And the male Aslan driving starts to laugh, and uh, he says something in Troc, <laughs> and and both Rex are. And the female start to kind of Rexar starts to laugh, and the female kind of laughs and goes, "Whatever." She goes, "Don't mind him." And Rexar, what he said was is that uh, that the suits that they handed out to to Keith, Beth, Ting, and Ox are actually those made for Aslan children. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, keys on the sides and no. <laughs> <laughs> you open a pocket and there's like little plastic keys yes yes keith's got one with a big elmo on the front <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um so um, i'm not gonna say anything and i'm just gonna sip the beer <laughs> and so after uh, i'll ask in in troth if i could just bring my battle dress no no but, but, uh, um, but she, t she says, uh, she says, uh, if you're, if you're, uh, wanting to shoot weapons, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that, uh, the, the Lord will, will have, um, he'll probably take you on a hunt and he'll, they'll supply you with some guns. Oh, I, I am, I am not really the gun kind of. I, I believe people should go hand to hand or not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I wanted to point out um, that I still have my Babelfish thing. Oh, that's right, that's right. So you you probably understood that what he was talking about too. That's right. I, I keep forgetting you have you have a Babelfish. That's right. Um, I have a translator program. Right. Right. So after after uh, you know about it probably takes about an hour and you can see in the distance these domes and it appears that these domes are there, there's two of them and they are you know huge domes these are enormous domes and um, it appears that these are the uh, clan lords uh, manor. Is I mean, this is his, <laughs> this is his private mansion that he's using these domes for. And uh, they they pull up, and she she tells you, of course, that you need to um, don your suits, and uh, because you know we're we need to do a little bit of a a, a walk from the vehicle to uh, the inner dome, <clears throat> and. Um, so you guys put your suits on and you step out and even with the suits on, like 
being out of the starport and in this thin atmosphere, you can feel that that sun like instantly blazing on you, or or two suns rather, and you make your way into the dome. And when you look into the dome, when you step inside, you realize that the domes inside is actually completely set up uh, as a private biome. This is a savanna-like biome. Um, and, uh, I mean, there, there's the uh, fields of grass. There's a river that bisects the entire place. Um, there's jungle-like plants. And you see here that there is a camp set up, and you can see that there is a, a couple of males and a couple of female Aslan that are um, that have felled a rather large beast and are chewing it down on it. And one of the, the one of the males looks up and um, and waves you closer. Um, uh, welcomes you over and uh, he tells you uh, that he he introduces himself as <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to just destroy this word Fatwayahas and he is the clan lord of Wikatao and he is um uh he and his Eco Eco being his his family are enjoying uh, a meal and uh, he says, uh, "Would you would you care to join me? For, would you care to join me for dinner?" Of course. Certainly. So he is going. Uh, hold on here. I need to put that in this. Look at equipment. Or just ignore me when I click on stuff. I do that too. Oh. Well, it's, the reason why I'm looking is because it specifically lists a type of rifle. Sorry, guys. There we go. I'm cooking with gas. No, it is not. Interesting. So he he hands out um, hunting rifles. They they're calling them um, Ikiasir rifles, and I don't I don't know what that means because it's not listed in the book. But uh, I'm going to assume that they are hunting rifles. Um, right out of um, Central Supply Catalog is fine, but I would say that they are probably the, the big big game hunting rifles on page 113. <laughs> or you can take the flechette submachine gun because, hey, that's always good for... And uh, he he 
basically tells tells you you can hunt whatever you want. He says um, <clears throat> to the north there is um, a particularly large beast um, that is called a uh, a wuaka. And uh, Rexar, you know, a wuaka are. I mean. Um, they're not very frequently hunted, um, and in a lot of cases, they're hunted with, like, rocket launchers. They're mm. basically a walking tank. Let's hunt that, Captain. <laughs> I mean, if you... I mean, you might have I found want to a, hear you, the whole menu before I order, okay? You, you might have found a, a, a use for, um, for your hammer, because... Uh, yeah. I mean, it will take vehicular damage. Is there anything else to hunt around here? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a uh, all over the place, um, which um, translates as hoof meat. Um, <laughs> a uh, are basically the um, uh, they're they're cow like. I mean, you guys have some experience with a uh, You transported a bunch of them to um, Rexar's farm. Uh, up in the uh, Yggdrasil subsector. Um, there's also the still, which are, um, they just, that translates from, <laughs> that translates from Troc to um, Ganglic as monkey meat. And uh, Aslan likes still, They're, they make a good <laughs> snack. Um, and, but uh, um, uh, the clan lord, he tells Rexar specifically, he says, uh, keep an eye out on your human friends. There are some uh, uh, Kikha that uh, are around as well, just to spice things up, but I don't think that your your friends were, would be ready for them. Kikha are like um, really vicious saber-toothed tiger. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they, they keep him around because they, you know, the Aslan like a challenge. Yeah. I could have do. Fist, my my glove, right? Uh, yeah, you could use your glove if you want. <clears throat> well, I'm better at hitting with it than I am with this damn rifle. But... <laughs> I mean, I, I'll shoot the rifle, but if something kind of comes where I can hit it with the glove, that's that's my best bet. Right, right. Yeah. I would go for a wooa, personally. Um... Wooa ka? Okay. These hunting rifles have a, a 200 meter range. I mean, all we have to do is get a nice line of sight and then yep. run and, and dash, and, you know, get away and, and, you know, take a long shot again and try to hide in foliage until, uh, you know, we finally wear it down. Yeah. Or oh, I hit it with my hammer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you want to play the tank role, I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, I'm not a tank. Wants to go I'm an Aslan. Yeah. So, I guess that's what we're doing. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's a it. small uh, herd of oh, oh, over here. There's three of them. And he basically, I don't know if he, if he has any idea how much food a human actually eats, but he, he tells you guys... When you've each had a kill, we can bring it back here and we'll have dinner. <laughs> so oh my God. <laughs> I can't eat that much. <laughs> I I had a late kill at lunch. I don't know. I'm, I'm Captain, you killed to something see... without me? What what kind of <laughs> vegan options are they offering? <laughs> I want the impossible Uwa. <laughs> So are we going after the big thing or the little things? I would like to take out the big thing. I mean, that's gotta be that's gotta be cool. Uh, if we pull that off, then you know we'll probably get. I mean, there's, these guys are hunters. If we want to get on their side, we go up this the, the big thing, and you know we basically teabag all their high standing hunters. You know they they think we're humans. We gotta earn their respect, and and you do that by taking out the big the big bad boss. And you do okay. it. Also, it would be a really attack for the most amount of press. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a funny way for one of us to die finally too. It'd be like 
<laughs> yeah, what finally got what finally took them out was you know uh, an elephant sized um, kind of saber tooth creature. Yeah, we just had to hunt the big one. Well, yes, we had to. I mean, we could. Are we allowed to bring our grenades and shit? <laughs> no, we can, but we shouldn't. No, hunting rifles and you know, like Rexar's axe. You can bring your piston glove. Uh, All right, yeah, melee weapons are fine. Yeah, they're honorable and hunting rifles. Okay. So, are you guys wanting to go after the Awuaka? Uh, yeah, we yeah. keep saying it. Yeah, that's. It's that's, happening. It seems yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, we might want There's to try to. Pressure. I can't yeah. resist. Uh, uh. I got my gravity hammer yeah. and my axe. All right. So this is the Awuaka. And it... You know... On here? I actually have a better picture. That for some reason, I... Didn't... Uh... Yeah. There we go. For some reason it didn't occur to me that I should upload that. And, uh... There we go. What book has all like the traditional Aslan stuff? Um, Trojan Reach book and in the adventure folder has it, and um, also um, Aliens of Charted Space uh, Volume One has a bunch of Aslan stuff. They're pretty much identical. Um, I didn't really see any differences. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Working for me. So this is an Awuk, huh? Mmm, there's a lot of tasty tusks on there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love tusks. They're so crunchy. Should we roll initiative, you think? Or Yes. Oh, I don't think it's Everybody can roll initiative. No, he does not. Well, all right. All right. Oh, Beth, you got a negative one? <laughs> oh, roll. I did. Oh, never mind. I'm still at zero. So between Ox, Rexar, and Ting, you guys all three got zero. Who of you wants to go first? I'll do it. I got a I got a negative one. Oh, you got a negative one. Okay, well we'll come back to you in just a second. So between Ox and Rexar, who wants to go first? Uh, doesn't matter. I'll do it. All right. So, and then between Beth and Tang, which one of you guys wants to go first? Let's just do alphabetical order. Okay. Sure. That works. So Keith, uh, you came out on top with a one. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm going to aim straight for the ear. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what, okay, which part would it. you say is it's knee? Well, snakes don't really have knees. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Is an assault pike essentially a, a punji stick from World War II? <laughs> uh, no, it's more like a... Uh, it's basically like a ball peen hammer and one side of it is just a long curved spike. 
But it says um, it blows so, up upon stepping. Oh. Well, a punji stick is just a sharp and pointy thing. If it blows up, then that's even that's better than a punji stick. I thought they had the ones with tank mines on them. I've never heard of those. I, I mean, all I know from punji sticks are just sharpened sticks that they stick in a hole. <laughs> so I got a 10. Okay. So that's a hit with a plus two to damage. Okay. And this thing does 3d th plus three? I believe that is correct. Yes, 3d plus three. Fifteen. Okay. Ouch. All right. So he takes it in the air and is all kinds of pissed off. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so he, let's see here. My goodness. So I need to, <clears throat> yeah, something works here. Let's see, encounters and dangers. This would definitely be a danger. All right, so he is going to charge. He has five meter speed. <laughs> oh, Keith. And Tang. We're a little too close, huh? <laughs> and Beth. Uh, all three of you get trampled as this thing comes through, but i got to make an attack first. So he is going to make a melee natural plus two. I'd like to parry. You can certainly do that. So you get to add really your... Try. You can add your melee... Uh, um, skill to your uh, or to his as a dm to his attack that's two okay all right so that means it's a jump out of the way I mean... <laughs> yeah i mean yeah you can you can use a reaction to, to dodge all right really that's what i'm yes. gonna do. uh so to do that whoops, I ran right past it destructive weapon I have a plus two to my intellect. Why would I have gotten that close? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Like I mean, with these long sniper rifles, we should have really. Well, we didn't probably. object either when we got. Yeah, moved. I'm <laughs> not crying. Just whatever. <laughs> I didn't realize how close we were. Where is... Right up next to the hoops. Minor action, reactions. Here we go. So dodging. Uh who is dodging, will inflict a penalty equal to their uh, dexterity DM or athletics dexterity, whichever is higher to the attacker's roll. So if you want to dodge, you can add your dex uh, or your athletics dexterity uh, as a DM to their attack roll. Okay. So um, my uh, that would be a, a one. Uh, it's plus one for either one of them. So Okay. Uh, what about Beth? Yeah, I got a one in either, so yeah. Okay, so that puts him at a net between all three of you a, at a negative two. And he still tramples <laughs> with a dead. Uh, okay. Here we go. Shit. All right, here we go. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I I am going to give you each your own individual attack roll because this may come out better. Um. So 
So there's a miss on Keith. There's a miss on Beth. And there's a miss on Tang. Okay. So this this Awuaka charges through uh your uh your group <laughs> and you guys Ow. kind of dodge, you know, out of the you know Ting doesn't really dodge. He 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 just bounces a, a tusk off of his gloves like a boss. Like <laughs> He's like <laughs> he's like the waitress in Waffle House. <laughs> he's like, get oh, away yeah, from me. Bender, I saw her. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so uh, you guys kind of dodge out of the way. Hold on, just a moment here. And to regret our life choices. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, wrong dice. All of a sudden, Traveler's gonna use D eight. Okay. Rexar, what would you like to do? Hammer. Go for it. So these these Awuka have armor plus sex. <laughs> Sweet, my hammer has AP sixty, uh, uh, fifty. Nice. Like I said, it, you, these things are you're like basically attacking an air raft. Nine to hit. That's a plus one to damage. They're all low. Now does the does the hammer do uh, destructive damage? Let me. I just had it pulled up. I don't remember if that's a DD weapon. I think it's 5D. Okay. Uh, scrolling back up. I was reading about the Kree. Oh, the Kree, yeah. Are they horse <laughs> people? Are they like centaurs? Yeah. Yeah, they're militant vegetarians. Like, any planet that they run into... That has life forms that eat meat. They invade the planet and will kill every living thing on that planet. Do they? Do they like Asley? You. <laughs> <laughs> you are like number one on their, uh, you know, have it your list. way list. Oh, that's why I'm not on the Central Supply catalog. I'm on Aliens Trade Space. I do that all the time. <laughs> Wrong tab. Uh, AP fifty, bulky smasher. But does it does it do DD damage or is it just five D? No, five D. Okay, so then that is a plus one to damage. Five. Six, Twelve. Uh, sixteen. Uh, eighteen plus three strength. So that's 21 damage. Okay. Okay. And it's still standing. Uh, you still have a minor action. Are you? Did you want to move at all, or are you staying where you're at? Can I try to climb on top of it? Uh, not with a minor action. That that would definitely be a uh. Athletics dex or athletics strength check. Hmm. That would definitely be a, 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 a significant action. Oh, I'll just smack it with my hammer and stand there. Okay. Ox, what would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna... This thing is big, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll take a minor action to back up. Okay. How far can I get that far? Uh, Actually, let's go this way. One, two, three, four, five hexes. Yeah, you could go that far. And uh, shoot it. Go for it. Gun combat slug. Seven. I don't think so. Nope, that is a miss. 
Not terrible mess, but it is a mess. Well, you know, I was trying to make sure I didn't hit any of the, the party. Right? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yeah, as long as you don't roll snake eyes. Uh, Captain Beth, what would you like to do? A similar maneuver. Okay. Uh, maybe here, and then shoot. Okay. Let's see. I got eight. That's a hit. No bonus damage, but it hits. It's 3D what? Or what's the damage on it? Oh, it's three, 3D plus 3. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, six. Ooh, ow. Good shot, I guess. It, it takes another shot and is still standing. Oh, wait. Okay. Well, let enough. me... Okay, I just, just wanted to make sure... Is he does have six armor. There we go. Uh, Tang, what would you like to do? Uh, can I can I make a grapple attack to try to jump on its back and kind of get out of its strike zone there? Yeah. Um, I mean, hmm. Yeah, you can make a you can so a grapple if you want to grapple him. You're talking about an athletic strength. It's a contested athletic strength check. Mm. No, it's a it's a contested uh, unarmed. To grapple over makes a posed melee unarmed check with their target using either strength or dex. The okay. winner of this check gets to choose. Well, he'll... Okay. Uh, all right. So go ahead and make your your uh, attack. Oh, shit. Six. Ah! Okay. So, I mean... Yeah, your choice. Yeah. Uh, so I I think what I want to do I want to uh, well if I if I just wrap him up the only action he can do is to try to un un get un un uh, he won't be able to attack my friends if I understand. When involved in a grapple, the traveler may not perform any significant amount of action except for opposed to melee unarmed checks. So I'm just going to tie him up and maintain the grapple. Okay. <laughs> yeah, continue the grapple with no other effect. If, if I do an effect, it's my understanding that I lose the grapple. And so I am just going to, you know, I'm covering his eyes, you know, and whispering sweet nothing in his ear, <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Careless whispers starts playing. Yes. Well, I mean, I can use my shrieker box to mimic a cat purring in a tear. You know. <laughs> Funny that you say that. You do that, and Rexar looks around. I was like, "There's another one of us." <laughs> um, da, 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 da. The stories told around the campfire tonight. Right? Yeah. I mean, visualize it if I'm on its back, covering its eyes and stuff. You can say it's flailing about, trying to chunk me off, and we do the opposed thing. Yeah, again. I mean, it's it's yeah. bucking around, trying to get you yeah. off of it, and that it's basically that's what's taking up its action is it's bucking around, trying to get you off of it. Um, yeah, if if you were trying to visualize it, that's that's how I was. I'm not manhandling this beast down on the ground. No, I'm I've just it, I'm on its back and I've I've got it, you know, with my hands over its eyes and I'm kind of, you know, got my legs wrapped around it and I'm tightening my thighs, kind of pushing myself real close. 
<laughs> okay. That's a I'm really for... killer effect for such a weak ass roll, but you rolled weaker, so that's how you get it. That's that's right. Yeah. Well, King is jockeying around on this Iluaka and it is uh, bucking up all over the place and uh, everybody's I'm sure Ox is wanting to place bets to see if, if Ting can hang on for six seconds oh uh, there you go <laughs> uh, here out of the, these trees and out of this tree um, to Kekha uh, the first Kekka. I think is going to try and bite Keith. Yep, he's going to try and bite Keith. He gets an eight that hits, and ouch! He bites down for nine. Wow! Do I have any armor on? <laughs> I don't think you you do. Um, I would say though that the um um that pressure suit that uh they gave you in the car i'm gonna say that that has plus four to armor or plus the four baby protection. clothes have the same protection as combat flex <laughs> <laughs> because that's how tough asla and babies are <laughs> they need they need the armor protection you ever raise a, a toddler now imagine one with claws <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean with uh plus four protection you would take five okay Ooh. This Kekka is going to attack Rexar. Because Ting is riding. Actually, this Kekka is going to attack the Awuaka outright. It mm. it can it can smell the blood and thinks that it is yeah, it screws that up with a four, and the Awuka is going to <laughs> is going to kind of kick at it as a reaction, and misses with a seven. Just imagining like those guys who mess around with a horse too much, and the horse kicks them, and they go flying. Right. Keith, uh, you got a, a, a cat on you. Yeah, I got to fight this cat. Um, all right, uh, this Kekka. Um, so I guess it, if if it's possible for me to do so, I will shoot it with my gun. So you, the best you, are, you can use your, your rifle as a club, but you are uh, in uh, melee attack range. Oh great! Um, Jump in the water. Swim yeah, away. yeah. I was I, I was trying to decide. Does do these things swim? <laughs> do I know if they swim? You don't. You don't know. Uh, Kekka are from uh, from the planet uh, Kusyu, and so you don't know. I mean, <laughs> Rexar <laughs> might know, but you're I mean, fighting <laughs> the giant elephant. Then bam, Space Panther. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And then Space Panthers happen. Hopefully All right. Oscar Beth will kill that thing on you and get you back in the fight. Between... Yeah, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to club at it and then try to escape. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make your attack. Okay. Oh, sweet. Uh, so that is uh, 10. That is a hit with a plus two to damage. Okay. What kind of damage do I do with, with this as a club? So it would be 2D plus, uh, plus two. Uh, and, okay. pl and your strength modifier. 
Okay. Okay, so that is 10. Ooh. So he's going to take 9 because they have 1 armor. Okay, and then you wanted to try to move away? Yeah, I want to try to jump into the water. Okay, so you <laughs> you jump into the water, and the water, uh, this river's moving f not terribly fast, um, and it's not terribly deep, but you jump into the water. You can move up to six meters, so wherever you want to move. Okay, I can probably get across it then, huh? Yeah, I would think. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. The Awuaka is going to attempt to buck off Tang. I got an 11. Nope, only got a 10. Yay! All right. I kind of threw my hand back like this a couple times. <laughs> Rexar, there is this Awuaka that is attack, or, or this uh, Kekka that's attacking the Awuaka. I don't know if you want to deal with the... Hammer. Hammer the Kekka? Yes. So you're at like a minus two though because the Kekka is nowhere minus three. Minus three to hit because it's nowhere so near have the size of a vehicle. A plus two to this roll. Five. One. So that's an eight. That hits. Four. Six. Nine. 12. Ooh, 13. Uh, 18. Okay. So he takes 17. And is it takes... Uh, this is the first time anything's been hit by your hammer. and uh, the, Or the second time anything's ever been hit by your hammer. And is alive. <laughs> Define alive. <laughs> well... The, your hammer, when you hit, you can hear bones crunch. Um, this uh, Kekka is not uh, very healthy at this point. I do it like a little hand, like, shoo, shoo. Movement. <laughs> Ox, what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to shoot the Akuaka again. Okay. Or try to, I should say. Uh, can I use a minor action to aim at it? Yes, you can. I'll give you a plus one. Okay. I uh, need everything I can get. by a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, six. Well, yeah, it's not enough to, to hit uh, Tang. That's a good thing. So, uh, I'm yeah. such a good dice roller. <laughs> hey, that's. I remember when we first started playing, you were a way worse shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Uh Beth, what would you like to do? Um, I'll shoot the Kekka. Which one? The, or the, the yeah, the one that attacked people and not the other thing. Okay. Okay. I got nine. That is a plus one to damage. Seventeen. Ooh, it takes sixteen, and this Kekka drops. Sweet. Uh, are you staying where you're at, or did you want to move? Or um, it looks like Ting's got things under control. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right, of cowboy. That's true. I mean, <laughs> uh. Ting, what would you like to do? Well, 
You know, I, I feel if I try to do something, we're going to have these opposed checks. I'm going to turn on my shriek box. Okay. So everybody within five meters of me uh, has a minus two to whatever the fuck you're trying to do, <laughs> unless you have ear protection. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm on this big dude. And if he throws me off, it's going to suck. So uh, if you're within five meters of me, you take a minus two to whatever the fuck you want to do. Okay. I'm going to turn that on, and I guess I'm going to continue the grapple. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's nothing else better for me to do. Okay. So, yeah, the, that's a 12. You take a minus two now. Well, he only got a 10. Thank God. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, ride him. <laughs> I don't know. You, you might end up just... Uh, um like writing this thing out and uh <laughs> breaking it you might you might write it back <laughs> to oh, the <hell> yeah. <laughs> um, if that, if any times it wants to submit i'm totally cool with that this keka uh is running away Yeah, he. he runs... It's doing what all cats do when they're like at the end of their life cycle. It's just gonna find a, a place to hide. <laughs> until yes. Passes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Ting, I will allow you to make a. Do you have? Hmm. Now that is a good question. Another one of those things. How does that work here? Survival could basically come into play. I've got maybe persuasion in survival. <laughs> Let me take a look here. Yeah, do you have anything for animals? Nothing specific, but I'll sure jack that trade. Go for it. Uh, basically, we're looking for an animal handling plus your choice. I'm going to say if you want, you can throw charm on there. Oh, now I do have a plus one in charm. So uh, this will, uh, I don't have animal handling, but I could jack the trade. So minus two, then minus one because of my charming personality. So this will be just at minus one. All right. Uh, I'll smack it with my hammer no matter what you say. <laughs> don't hit my new pet. You killed Fluffy. Seven. No. It, it, it's gonna. It, it is starting to wear out, but it is. Uh, it is still trying to buck you off. Um, it is getting easier to hang on. Um, Keith, what would you like to do? I, I'm gonna shoot at this thing, even though Ting is on top. I, I <laughs> okay. Feel like it needs to be taken down. So, yeah. We're not supposed to tame dinner. <laughs> Don't give it a I got name. Sixes, so uh, so that is a uh, uh, fifteen. Ooh, ooh. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, that is an exceptional success. Um, that is a plus seven to damage, oh and gosh. an exceptional success. All right. So that is uh, 20. Okay. Sure. Uh, Certainly this thing is going to start wobbling soon. I mean, God, we've dropped over 100 on it, I'm sure. Keith, with your, su with your exceptional success, you get a headshot and the Awua Ka goes down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even while you were injured, that's pretty, yeah. pretty badass. Ting, make a athletics dex check. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Don't, don't fuck this up. You'll oh, now you're gonna be embarrassed in front of the Aslan. <laughs> so, no, it's worth it. So it doesn't unless I die. So no, no, you don't you don't take any damage, but Tang uh, the Awuka goes out right in it, it gets shot in the face right as it is in mid buck, 
and it just collapses, throwing you from its back, and you kind of land, you know, ass over tea kettle into the into the grass. And try to catch him. You, you, yeah, you can make an athletics dex check to try and catch Tang. Athletics dex. All right, that's just a plus one. Three. Five. Three plus five. Three, yeah. Eight. Yeah. Plus one. So Nine. rather than landing, Rexar catches you like in a loving embrace, and the theme from <laughs> Bodyguard starts playing. I'm going to kiss him on the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys have now brought down an Awuka, and you have a uh, Kekka that you can drag back to the camp for dinner, and we will pick up uh, the dinner next week. At seven o'clock on Wednesday night. Cool, good work, everybody. See you then. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> that was that was interesting. Have a good one, guys. I will see you next week. Yep, have a good night. Thanks.